Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan with EscoTech and I am back with our upgraded Optiplex 7040 for one last video. This time we're going to go straight to the CPU and see how much of a performance boost we can get from a CPU upgrade. We're going to take the stock Core i5-6500 and upgrade it to a Core i7-6700. Stay tuned for the results. So many of you are probably already familiar with the differences between a Core i5 and an i7, but this generation we're looking at six generation Skylake processors. The Core i7 just really benefits from hyperthreading, which splits each physical core into two logical cores, so you get the eight threads on the i7-6700. It does have a 200 megahertz higher base clock and also a 400 megahertz faster turbo boost. The i7 also has two megabytes more of Intel Smart Cache. So we are still running on the stock cooler. Both the i5 and the i7 are 65 watt parts. Uh, we did make some cooling upgrades, so if you want to see those, you can check out my previous video. But you can see that our temps are holding pretty decent. After an hour and a half of Prime 95, we're still only at 70 degrees. Moving on to OCCT, which I think is the best benchmark for maxing out your CPU and GPU. We saw a CPU temperature spike to 81 degrees, but it was pretty short-lived and temps were mostly in the mid-70s. We also saw a power spike up to 208 watts, which is the highest of any of our benchmarks. And a quick note on this power measurement, the kilowatt is measuring input voltage while power supplies are rated at output voltage. So I'm multiplying by 1.07 to add in 7% inefficiency. So when our Dell 240 watt power supply was maxed out, it would read 256.8 watts from the wall. Taking our max input voltage from our benchmarks at 208 watts, that gives us a max power usage of 80.9%. I just wanted to show quickly that the 240 watt power supply is more than capable of covering the system. And now onto our benchmarks. We're going to start with Cinebench where the Core i5-6500 scored 1314 points. And the Core i7 with its extra cores scored 1828 for a 39.1% increase. If you've watched my channel in the past, you know I like the Catzilla benchmark made by AllBenchmark. It's probably because I like monster movies, but it never fails to entertain. Here our Core i5 scored 24,586. And the i7 scored a little higher at 26,415. Which ended up being a 7.4% increase. Moving on to our next benchmark is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a pretty CPU intensive game, so we're going to get our expected result here with the Core i5 scoring 68 frames a second and the i7-6700 showing a pretty good jump all the way up to an average of 84 FPS. Which gives us a performance increase of 23.5%. This is a pretty good result and shows that in CPU intensive games the i7-6700 would definitely be worth it. Finally, in Unigen Superposition Benchmark, our Core i5-6500 scores 6,497, and our Core i7-6700 scores 6,502. This benchmark isn't very CPU dependent, so the almost identical result wasn't much of a surprise, and multiple runs showed the same thing. Well, that's it for this video. In conclusion, if you do a lot of CPU dependent gaming or applications, the Core i7 is worth it. In gaming, there are some situations where the Core i5 could bottleneck the GTX 1650 Super that we put into this system, so the i7 may be a better CPU-GPU balance with that card, especially now the games are taking advantage of more than four cores. If you have anything to add or any questions, feel free to drop a line in the comments, and thanks for watching.